Returning now to the Jobs and Skills Summit in Canberra, let's bring in now the Australian Constructors Association CEO, John Davies. John, really appreciate your time. Thank you. What's your take on the summit so far? We've heard from the Employment Minister, Tony Burke. He's talking about overhauling IR laws, changing the controversial better off overall test uh, as part of that. What's your assessment so far? Look, it, there's been a lot of positive spirit in the room so far and, um, and, and, and some refreshing collaboration, to, to be quite frank. And it's, uh, now there's quite a bit of optimism there. Yes, there's a limit to what can be actually achieved in two days in a room. But there's, there's been a fair amount of pre-work that has gone in uh, before this summit, um, at leading to uh, them being able to announce a few things uh, today. Your sector is huge. I think it's, what, about 10% of the nation's workforce. So we're talking really large numbers there. But the sector is, as we know, in something of a crisis at the moment. We're seeing report after report of insolvencies. What broader reforms are you pushing for, for the industry and therefore the workforce, to make the sector that much more secure? Look, we think that the federal government's got a real role to play here. I mean, they invest a very significant amount of money into infrastructure through the National Partnership Agreement that uh, puts the money through to the states, and, and yet they put very few preconditions around how that money is spent. We think that there's a real opportunity here to, to start putting some preconditions in there in terms of areas like improving the industry culture, improving sustainability, financial sustainability of businesses, but also environmental sustainability and improving capability and capacity and productivity as well. You do have some unique issues to address in the construction sector. When it comes to issues facing workers, there's the safety issues, of course, and also cultural issues. We've heard a lot already at this summit about the need for gender equity and you know, more flexible work as well to get women into the sector. How does that work in terms of where your industry is heading? Yeah, look, our, our industry is probably one of the worst, to be quite frank. Um, only 12% of our workforce are women, and that number dwindles down to single digits if we're talking about blue collar. And there is some work being done in this space. The Construction Industry Culture Task Force has developed a culture standard which is looking at improving things like uh, worker time for life and well-being to improve the culture of the industry and attract more women in. But for sure, we're starting from a very low base and got a long way to go. I see in your address to the summit, you're saying skilled migration and training is important, but you're saying it won't solve the skill shortage in the construction sector. And you're pointing out that the only way to do that is lift productivity and do more with the resources we already have. How do you get there? What are you suggesting in terms of practical outcomes the government could adopt pretty easily? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, when we talk about productivity, quite often people sort of think about blue collar activities, you know, how do we get more efficient at pouring concrete, for example. But, you know, a lot of our shortages are in the white collar space with things like engineers. And we spend a huge amount of wasted time and effort in how we procure, how governments procure projects and how they govern the projects. And we think that this is where the federal government can take a lead in terms of placing some preconditions around how that money is spent to improve that governance and, and focus on value, not just from a point of view of what's the lowest possible price, but look at other things like driving improved diversity, driving improved sustainability outcomes and, um, and, and getting, getting more productive. Just finally, we've seen the coalition deciding not to turn up today. They're worried that there is far too much of a union presence at the summit. Do you share any of those concerns? Look, unions are an important stakeholder in our industry, and I think it's entirely appropriate that they're represented at this summit. What we've said at the summit today in my speech today is that government, unions and industry need to leave behind the baggage of history. We need to work collaboratively like never before. So it's entirely appropriate that they're at the summit. John Davies, really appreciate you joining us. We'll let you get back inside the room. The lunch break is almost over. We can see that uh, people are starting to get back in there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.